we checked over our hotel room. Honestly, I'm so exhausted. I feel like I didn't get enough sleep, but we are on our way out of Qatar now. We checked out the mall a little bit. We just kind of like walked through it. It's definitely like the biggest mall that I've ever been to. We did pick up like a lunch quickly before we head out. But one thing that is really interesting is that I believe just fast food places do this, but they have where if you sit in your car, the workers will come out and take your order and then like bring it to you. So like you literally just have to sit in your car. You can honk the horn and they'll come out. We didn't do that. Just ended up going in and ordering. But yeah, that's one thing that you can do here, which is kind of interesting. Anyways, we are now on our way back to Saudi Arabia and so we are going to go to a place called El Asa. I'm actually really excited to see there. I guess it's like a really like historical place. I'm I'm excited to explore and check it out. I've seen like a lot of pictures online and it looks beautiful. But yeah, I'm probably gonna take a good nap in the car now to explain properly as this is the second part to my last Saudi travel vlog. During that last vlog, we ended up in Qatar for one night and this is the next day where we are headed back to Saudi Arabia. Here we are going to an area of Saudi Arabia called El Essa, which is basically known for their many historical sites, including El Qara Mountain, which was the main purpose of our visit. And here we're just driving through the streets of a city in El Essa. Our first stop was to this old traditional market that's outside. They have many of these all around Saudi Arabia and I love visiting them. We made it and this here is the mountain. We're gonna go and check it out now. before you get to the caves so there's a restaurant outside even which is really cool and then there's a museum that you first stop into I thought this was a really interesting exhibit that was worth sharing. It basically showed the different words for God in different Semitic languages, and some of them are ancient languages and they also show Arabic and just how similar they are, which I thought was really interesting. After the museum, we went outside where there was a little walkway until you get to the cave. So there were plaques everywhere. Um, we didn't really have that much time to read it because we got there so late. And for now, I'm just going to let you enjoy the beautiful scenery. Trust me, it was much more beautiful in person. I really wish the camera could have captured it properly. <laughs> so tall in person. You can't see it, but... the little side here up the mountain. I wasn't sure if we were supposed to be up here, but there's a whole bunch of footprints and there's like lighting. So I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be up here. There was other people up here too. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous, but here, I'll show you the other way. And now it just started raining really heavy, but thankfully we're at the end of it, so we're just gonna hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Cause it's getting pretty heavy. And it's lightning as well. <laughs> oh, everyone's just running now. So we've now arrived back home and I didn't really get a chance to kind of go over everything. We were really rushed, we were really short on time. So basically I'm just kind of gonna go over my thoughts on El Esa and kind of what I think about it. Honestly, it is a really, really beautiful place. We got there really late, so I didn't really get to explore it during the daytime, so it was night, it was very laid out. Um, everything was pretty dark, but to me, it was still really beautiful, but I think 
during the daytime it would be so beautiful especially during like maghrib time like around sunset so basically i don't really think i explained that properly but it's an area of saudi arabia they do have a lot of really historical things like very ancient like goes back to 5000 bc um civilization in that area which is so cool especially for a history nerd like myself that mountain in specific that we went to it's called al Qara mountain i believe but we only explored like one little area of it which was basically where there's like a museum and there's a little area where you can go inside the caves so basically first off we went to the museum that's where you start you start at like a museum and the museum was really cool it is a little bit small for now but i'm pretty sure they're expanding it but still they have so many fascinating things and i loved exploring it it was so much fun they even had things like i was so surprised i immediately saw there was what's called a death mask. If you're a history nerd, you might know what this is. Basically in ancient times, they used to bury people, like important people with things, right? They used to bury them with objects. And I guess that what they found was somebody was buried with this death mask, which is a essentially made out of gold leaf and it's put on their face and they somehow like flatten it so it like fits the face. I don't know too much about it, but it is really, really cool. Yeah, so it was really cool. They had like a display case with this like gold death mask and all these gold things. Anyways, I'm telling you about this because I couldn't film anything. There were signs up saying that like we weren't allowed to film it for social media or for personal use or anything like that. So obviously I wanted to respect that and I didn't film. Oh, they also had there was this stone tablet which had an ancient language on it. I don't know what ancient language it was, but it was kind of found, I think, in the area. I don't know, some sort of old Semitic language. I'm not sure what it was. The plaque beside it didn't specify what language it was. And then after the museum, we just walked around. We walked to, there was an area to outside. You walk a little bit before you get to the cave and there's like all these, I guess, writings up. We didn't really have time to read them because we went, it was so close to closing. We didn't really have that much time. They did give us extra time, but then it started raining. So we didn't get that extra your time yeah we walked to the cave and the cave was very cool it it actually looks so high in person they had it really well lit so you can go at night too which was really nice i think definitely it would be so nice around sunset time like the way that it would look it would just look like golden hour and really beautiful but yeah it was really cool to be able to go in there and see that yeah and then afterwards you exit the the cave and then there's other parts that you can look at i do think that there are other places where you can kind of like hike more of the mountain so you can explore more of the mountain just maybe not the area that we were in i know that there's so much more to this area like there's some sort of oasis that's supposed to be really beautiful and then i think there's like a like a really old castle that a lot of people go to which i really wanted to get to but like i said we got there so late and we didn't have much time we had to just get back home but i forgot to mention there is a lot of history with this cave too so there's history dating back i guess to a really old civilization from i believe the mesopotamia Mesopotamian era. I think that dates back from what I saw online like 5000 BC, which is crazy. And then I think later on there were Muslims in the area. Muslims used to go and basically take their kids to learn Quran at this cave. And I'm just imagining that that would be such a beautiful way to learn the Quran where it would be sort of like almost isolated and it would be really beautiful and I just think it would be such a good way to like focus. I even told my husband that I would love to go back there someday and just see more of it. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to do that on this trip, I don't think, but maybe the next time we come here, inshallah, I would love to be able to go there uh, to go to El Essa and explore more of it, like really to see like the castle and the oasis and everything and yeah especially during the daytime i would love to go during the daytime next time overall i really enjoyed it i had so much fun one thing that i love about saudi arabia too is that there are so many different areas that are so unique from one another and so even just culturally some of them could have you know a farming culture like al Essa has like a very rich farming culture they have a lot of date trees and they are known for a certain type of bread and like all these different things and they have obviously like the the history like the historical aspect of like the mountain and all that kind of stuff and then there's also other areas that might have more of like a fishing culture and like all this kind of stuff it just makes it so unique every area it just feels so different from one another even though you're still in the same country and there's so many other areas that i really want to visit like i can't think of what the area is called but i think in english people call it like the gingerbread village or something like that because the houses look 
like gingerbread houses but maybe next time inshallah i will get to visit there because i don't know every time i see it on tv i'm just i'm just amazed with it it looks so beautiful and it's around like all these mountains and it's just really beautiful i know a lot of people think that saudi arabia is just desert but that's completely untrue there's even areas that get snow sometimes i've seen like pictures online of like snow and there's like camels in the snow and it's just i don't know it's really beautiful like th that imagery but yeah there's just there's so much to saudi arabia that a lot of people don't really know that's enough of my ranting anyways i want to thank you all for watching my video and please make sure to like and subscribe because i will be having some more vlogs from saudi arabia coming up soon inshallah